does the walker choose the path or do I choose random things to talk about on this channel? You be the judge. Today, I am talking about my beloved Sabriel. Hello my book hoes and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. My name is Bianca and this is my channel and today we're going to talk about books. Why are we talking about this today? Because uh, apparently it's been 25 years since this book was originally published and it's meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to a lot of other people who are really into the genre or who got into the genre because of a badass woman with a sword on a cover of a book. I'm not gonna talk too much about my own personal experiences with this book and what it's meant to me but I will be talking about mostly the frequently asked questions around this book series in the hopes that maybe it'll get people excited about it and if you haven't read it get you into reading it or potentially if you maybe picked up this book and never read it or if you read the original trilogy but haven't kept up with the newer books and content that's come out I'm hoping that maybe giving you a refresher will get you eager to read the new books let's start off with who is Sabriel she is this badass that has a sword and this bell bandolier and her sassy cat Mogget and she goes on an adventure to save her father. On her journey she's accompanied by not only this amazing nefarious cat that is yes talking and slightly magical but also she manages to find a statue that is actually a man that is someone that's going to be part of the story for a while. We start off with Sabriel 18 graduating from Waverly College. She's still going to school there right below the wall just south of the wall and it's important because she can do basic magic stuff just south of this wall that divides the old kingdom from this non-magical kingdom. The old kingdom is the magical kingdom and pretty much you have to have special accommodation to even go there. Magic is there along with a lot of really bad things from death. Death and necromancy and zombies and undead and those things have a lot to do with what is going on in terms of the evil things from the old kingdom that are not only trying to encroach on the old kingdom and have been but eventually start to seep into below the wall with any world there's magic and there's those who seek to misuse it and that's pretty much where we are in the beginning of sabriel she's just a girl trying to finish up school and suddenly she gets a call to action to help save her father from a very grim fate so in this universe there are necromancers and they're the abortions. So the necromancers are typically the people who are going to be using the bells or flutes or whatever to summon the dead, to reawaken them, to do the bidding of the evil powers of the dead. Versus the abortions who have, yes, they have the same bells of a necromancer, but they're specifically using them for good, to banish the dead, to keep evil things at bay, and try to maintain the balance between life and death. And while there's a lot of like evil dead things, I will say that like this book doesn't necessarily paint death as a bad thing. And especially the folks who deal in death, they talk a lot about it and it's not seen perceived as this like really evil terrible thing. But the people who try to like subvert death are the people who are not great. Sabriel is the first book in the Old Kingdom trilogy series, the Abhorson series, I've heard called the Sabriel series, even though she's not really the main character in all the books. This series goes by a lot of names. I think it's like the Abhorson series on um, Goodreads and the Old Kingdom series on Amazon. I might have flipped that. But if you search for any of those permutations, you'll probably find information on these books. They're all written by Garth Nix. And again, this series is 25 years old, starting with this first book. I personally call them the Old Kingdom series because that just makes the most sense to me. Sabriel is the main character in her book and she really isn't the main character in the other books, though she is there. Who are the main characters in Sabriel? Well, besides Sabriel, who we've talked about, we have Touchstone, who again is the statue she comes across and saves and he actually is a man who's been asleep for a bit so he's a little bit of mystery behind him which slowly unravels as the book goes there's Mogget who typically appears as a white cat and is bound to the Abhorsons you learn a little bit about Mogget and you learn a lot more as the story progresses but basically Mogget uh, has certain restrictions on the nefariousness that Mogget can um, try to weave in the Abhorsons life but because Mogget is old, Mogget understands how to test those limits, much like a raptor testing its cages. While Mogget can at times be very annoying and frustrating to the Abhorsons, 
Mogget's actually very useful and has a lot of knowledge because he's so old. Karagor is the main villain lurking character in this first book. It's a greater dead being. You learn more about who Karagor was before Karagor became a greater dead being when he was alive. His shadowy past is intertwined with most of the characters. When was Sabriel published? Sabriel was originally published in 1995 and I got this version years later at a book fair, but it's the original cover with an amazing woman with a sword. Have I mentioned that enough? Because that's really critical to my whole life. This year, the 25th edition came out. It has a lot of goodies in here, an exclusive little short story about Sabriel while she's at school. It has notes on um, Garth Nix writing this book and some excerpts from other books. If you're a fan of this series and you just really love this book and it's been a lot to you, I know that like getting the hardcover was really cool because I didn't have the hardcover of this first book until this edition came out. Let's get to the other books so you have an idea of what this series is about. So we start off with Sabriel and she has her adventure and she comes into her own and it is followed by Lyriel, which is another wonderful book about another badass lady who has a magical dog friend who helps her um, kind of come to terms with her fate and the misconceptions of what she thought her life would be. There are epic adventures in a library and a lot of just, again, coming into your own and accepting who you are. Sabriel is mentioned in this, but she is not necessarily the main character in this. And I will say, as far as trigger warnings go, this definitely has uh, thoughts of suicide and self-harm, so be aware of that. Then the third book in the original trilogy is Abhorsen, which again, we see another badass person. Who is it? You'll find out without giving too much away. This essentially is the kind of wrap up of some of the story we start in Lyriel and even some plot points that we see early on in Sabriel. We just kind of get a nice little wrap up of some storylines. So this is the main trilogy, the original books, the Old Kingdom series, and then after that other books were published. In 2014, we got Clariel, and in 2016, we got Golden Hand. Clariel is set about 600 years before the events of Sabriel and is about an abhorsen adjacent family and girl going through a lot of life changes and mostly just wanting to be like, leave me alone. I don't want to, have to do anything with these courtly politics. I just want to go home. Golden Hand is actually adjacent to Clariel in a couple of ways. There's some story threads there that make more sense if you read Clariel and then you read Golden Hand, but you don't have to. Sequentially, this does come right after a porson. So you could read the original trilogy and read this and it's kind of sequential events. And then most recently we have Tercial and Eleanor, which is the story of Sabriel's parents and their first meeting and the kind of subsequent adventures that happen a little after that. So in publication order, we have Sabriel, Lyriel of Horson, Clariel, Golden Hand, and then Tercial and Eleanor. There are also a bunch of short stories that I have not included in this because they are scattered amongst a few books and collections. But needless to say, there is a ton in this universe that you can explore and enjoy if you get really into it. Okay, and the sequential order of these books would be Clariel, Tercial, and Eleanor, Sabriel, Lyriel, of Horson, and then Golden Hand. That being said, is there a Sabriel reading order? I'd say not necessarily. I would for sure recommend that you read the original trilogy first, Sabriel, Lyriel, and of Horson. It is up to you on if you really want to read things in sequential order or not. prequel you say? I mean I guess that's like a very broad term but essentially Tercial and Eleanor is the newly released this year book that is all about Sabriel's parents in their first meeting. I really enjoyed this book. Again it's been kind of 25 years in the making although I don't believe I picked up the first book 25 years ago. I remember distinctly seeing Sabriel at like a book fair when I was a preteen and being like, I must have this. This is so cool. I've never seen a book like this. Some people got really into Tamara Pierce. I got really into Sabriel. I did find Tamara Pierce later in life, but like, that's a different story. The story follows Tercial and Eleanor separately and also in the times where they meet up and they're reunited. In their first meeting, there's a lot going on and Eleanor is kind of just now realizing there's a world beyond the one that she's grown up in. She spends some time in this book figuring out what her connections are there. Tercial is just starting off as an abhorsen in waiting and training and was not really aware this was where his life was gonna go and he's trying to get used to it along with again navigating the nefariousness of Mogget in his life. Mogget is in all the books which is a blessing. I really like this because it's just young people getting used to this world and getting used to each other. Eleanor is a sweet cinnamon roll. I really really love her story. 
I feel like maybe it was intentionally written just for me, JK, I know it wasn't. This isn't really spoilers where she's like becomes like a stage choreography person so she's helping people do like stage sword fighting and then she eventually gets recruited into doing the actual fencing classes and sword classes so she has to learn that and then there's like a secret magic club that she gets involved in. I just love 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 the parts of her story in this. While talking about these books I would be remiss not to mention that the audiobooks are lovely. I'd say specifically the audiobooks for the first three. Though they are not narrated by a woman they are narrated by Tim Curry. Again that's just the first three books Sabriel, Lyriel, and Haporsen. Those are the ones that are narrated by Tim Curry and they are perfection. He is such a good narrator and his voice for Mogget is so just like spot on and perfect and amazing and I really hope one day they make a movie of this because I need Tim Curry to voice Mogget on screen in some way. There is no shame in audiobooks and 100% if you are a person that needs to kind of re-listen to um, re-establish yourself in a fantasy series because there's a lot coming at you with names, locations, and universe building. I say check out the Tim Curry audiobooks because they're a pleasure to listen to but also it's just great fun. Let's talk about the covers for a second. So you'll notice that in Sabriel they it's a very iconic look. It was illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon, the husband and wife team, and this recent cover is an homage to it in multiple ways. This new one was drawn by David Curtis and specifically does callbacks to this cover because it's such a special cover and so beloved by folks. You'll notice that in the 25 years Sabriel's covers have gone through major shifts as it's gone through different editions of paperbacks and as different books were released. I talk a little bit about this with Megan but the big thing is these books went from centering these women that were amazing and look so powerful to eventually kind of following the trend around centering symbols or more abstract sci-fi fantasy landscapes and I am so glad that the 25th edition and that this new book really harkened back to the books that I love because I feel like seeing yourself on a cover is not only the current trend in a lot of book cover stuff they really want to make it clear who is in the book who's centered but again like for me I picked up these books because it was so different and it featured a woman looking powerful and that excited me. What's the magic system like in this universe? First of all the magic elements only really work north of the wall in the old kingdom and a little bit south of the wall depending on how high the winds are sometimes it goes a little more southerly than usual. A note too is that the day and night and seasons and time doesn't work quite the same in the old kingdom as it does below the wall. So there's literally like different almanacs for you to figure out which day it is and which kingdom. Because a little bit of magic does work below the wall, right below, that's why Sabriel can do magic classes and such at Waverly College. So there are mainly two kinds of magic that we deal with in this series, free magic and charter magic. Charter magic is mostly seen as the like good a-ok -okay, great magic to work with it's safe it doesn't have negative connotations it's a highly entrenched part of this culture most folks born north of the wall have a baptismal charter mark on their forehead and folks use that to check to make sure that their friends are not corrupted with evil magic free magic is the other kind of magic and it's for the most part seen as bad because it's a lot of times used to corrupt things and it's really associated with the necromancers. As the series goes on I feel like we learn a little bit about the gray area of free magic and some things that can exist with a little bit of free magic in it and charter magic. So what's up with these bells? The bells are one of the tools of the Porson. They are pretty much the most powerful tool they have against the dead and against the necromancers who use their own free magic bells for bad thing. We have Rana which is the sleeper so that's basically being like hey everybody I'm gonna ring this and everyone within range is gonna go to sleep. We have Moss Rael, the waker which is going to bring things back. You can see how that could be used by bad necromancers to bring the dead back a lot and basically make zombies although they aren't really called zombies on this but you know what I mean. We have Kibbeth the walker so that is kind of commanding someone something to move as you see fit and a lot of times that can move something into death. Dyram is a speaker, deals with speech, allowing and keeping things from being able to speak. 
Belgeier is the thinker, so that has to do with thought, allowing somebody to think, allowing them to reach into memories, or forbidding them from seeing memories. Sereneth is the binder, so a lot of times the Aporsons will use Sereneth in combination with something else to bind and move the dead. And then we have the most dangerous, probably, Astariel, which will send all those who hear it deep into death. It's often described as the mournful because should you hear, it's a very sad bell to hear. And yes, I will include links to how I got all of mine. Speaking of obviously my cosplay, this is my version 1.5, I'd say at this rate, of my Sabriel cosplay. One day I will do a deep dive into how I made this and how I commissioned this bell bandolier since it's so special. But I will definitely link in the description to all of the different bits that I used for this, including my new favorite thing in the whole world, which is this fake chainmail fabric that I got from Joanne. In terms of Sabriel being acquired made of different things, it actually was pitched as a graphic novel, and you can see here the photos that someone posted of their pitch that they did with Garth Nix. Laura Tolton worked on this. I think it looks really cool and it's a shame that we never got this graphic novel. The other big question a lot of people have is, is Sabriel a movie? Has it ever been a movie? No. And apparently it's been optioned a few times and Garth Nix even has on his website that he's written a screenplay and that it's gone through the process but there have been hiccups a couple of times. Basically it's come very close and a recent Reddit AMA just in November of 2021, he says that Amazon Studios was deep into figuring this out and building this. He even had built like the brand Bible, the story Bible for them and things fell through. Editing Bianca just here to say my audio cut out. So anyway, enjoy this next segment where I bring on Megan to give book recommendations and talk about the history of YA covers. And also is Sabriel YA all coming up next? Take it away, Bianca. Welcome, Megan. If you would like to introduce yourself and talk about like your bookishness and your interests and totally promote your work and the things that you're doing, because I think you're amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. I think you're amazing. Um, yeah, I'm Megan. Uh, I was an educator. Uh, I taught fifth grade for almost a decade. Just I had to take a little break from that. And I've uh, always been obsessed with uh, children literature especially middle grade and YA and being a teacher really let me lean into that and then I uh, kind of became a side hobby of reading and yelling about diverse books. Basically when I was looking at the top asked questions about the Sabriel books and the Old Kingdom series like people just are like is this a YA series? I remember when I was growing up, there was like a teenage section that slowly grew into like the big YA section. But I feel like when I was a teen, like the teen section was also mostly like after school, kind of like modern teenager type things, like a kind of more adult babysitters club kind of a thing versus being like what it is now, where it was just like blew up with like having like teenager centered stories in these fantasy or other realms. So I'm curious how you feel about this and like I think there's probably there's like I assume parents are trying to search for what this book is and like I guess like what would be like the things to note about this book for people potentially trying to read it or wanting their kids to read it. Yeah so disclaimer I haven't actually read this book but I can talk about what YA has become today. Yeah like we were talking about when we were younger it was less defined like I remember that teen section was called young adult at my library growing up but it definitely is not the cohesive idea of YA that we have today there was like you know like sweet valley high and then like later there was like the like i think of like the scott westerfield as like the beginning of the dystopian really popular uh part of ya and, and hunger games and stuff becomes it's kind of i feel like when with that and Twilight is when we start to see like this that more cohesive idea of what YA is, which what I think it is today is the criteria is that it's books about teenagers and um, there's kind of generally an accepted idea of like what is appropriate for YA. Now that when I say generally, of course, there's people who debate about what is and isn't appropriate for children, but I feel like widely it's accepted that um, that there is, it is okay to have some, some profane language and some drug use and sexual content, but that it, it does not have like sex scenes exactly that are in detail. They're more of a, 
fade to black kind of a thing, like a fault in your stars kind of a thing. Like there is sex in YA, but it is not going to be explicit uh, erotic stuff, if that makes sense. Um, but the main thing is that the protagonist is a teenager and that the books are aimed for teenagers. And there's kind of become this like style that they kind of are now written in that that just was not as much of a thing when Sabriel came out. What are some details I could share that might help folks understand like where this could lay? Yeah, well, is the main character a teenager? She is 18 and finishing school. And as far as like the appropriateness of the content and stuff, does it kind of fit what I was just talking about? I don't know. Like there <laughs> is a very interesting description of a of of a penis. <laughs> just like she's just like looking at the statue, talking about this dude's penis. And like there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that like it's definitely a thing that like having known some people and like definitely seeing some discourse, I definitely think there might be some people who would be like, oh, my child could never see read the description of a penis. So like that's definitely in there. There's also like descriptions. So she's like a zombie killer essentially. Like she's a necromancer, but like trying to make sure that the dead stay dead. And like she spends a lot of time in death. She spends a lot of time talking about death. She spends a lot of time talking to the undead and also killing things. They kill things a lot and there's a lot of descriptors of like body kind of horror stuff. So that's why it's really interesting to me. Cause I think that like, because I don't know, I'm just like, I think that like it could easily be like one of those weird, it could be both. Like it could be like YA, it can also easily be fantasy, just like pure fantasy. Cause it's very much reminds me of a lot of fantasy books on the fantasy shelf or the sci-fi shelf. Um, so I don't, I'm very much just like, this is what the book is. And maybe this is why it's also been hard for people to get into it because it can't be categorized easily. Yeah. Based on what you're telling me, I think that it would probably be on a YA shelf today, but uh, I didn't actually look up what it is in my library. Uh, that could be one way to know is like how are libraries categorizing it right now? Uh, but I think based on what you're saying, especially since this is the description of a statue and a uh, and like, like I said, there can be sexual stuff. If like, you're just not gonna have like romance novel kind of scenes in a YA book, or at least a lot of people generally think that that is kind of icky because it, not because that it's icky for teenagers to never up, but uh, but that you're reading about teenagers who are minors, and that's kind of why that line is drawn there. Yeah, um, it looks like it is published by Harper Teen still. So I mean. I assume it's probably like, if you're a teen and your teen's reading cool stuff, they might be into that. I think definitely too, for like the kind of body horror stuff, like that's just something, I think that's more of a thing to be aware of. The statue eventually like maybe becomes a person, but like anyway, <laughs> um, that eventually becomes like maybe important later in the series, but. Gotcha, okie dokie. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, as far as violence and stuff goes, we look at Hunger Games, like, that's pretty darn violent. So I think that that would not exclude it from YA, seeing as, like, children are allowed to kill other children in YA. Right. I want to go on a brief tangent, if I can, too. And I was thinking about this just the other day, which was, these are the original covers, these illustrated covers. And then revise, revision, mm. re... And all I can think about is about how this is really in that kind of Twilight Hunger Games era of like so simple and it makes me really mad because when I picked up this book I picked it up because it had a badass girl with a sword and you can't see her on these like you can't see the very visible women on these covers in these covers and it makes me mad. <laughs> I was literally just thinking about this sort of thing, not these covers specifically, but when you asked me for recommendations like Sabriel, I was like looking and it was interesting because there is this line that has only really recently been crossed where it was like this period of like 15 years where YA was just like these generic covers that don't really tell you what the book's about. And we've really moved past that now into these amazing covers. You could really get an idea of what the book is by looking at it. And you could actually see what kind of representation is in the book. Yes. 
yes 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 and like as much as i totally understand that like you shouldn't judge a book by its cover i'm also just like but literally as a teenager sometimes or as a younger reader you are going to be drawn to something like that the tamara pierce books i think at some point too got eventually like redone i'm glad that we're kind of coming back full circle i didn't show you the new sabriel book series cover but basically it is tercia eleanor which is her parent and it was specifically done as an homage to that original cover and I really love it because this is something that I would pick up today if I was new to the series there's a cat there's some like sword magic there's bells there's a woman in like armor yeah I love this it feels just like the old but it also feels fresh and new and like covers that we're seeing today we have really intentional art around who is being centered in a book right now in YA in um romance too and mm -hmm. very like in a lot of romance it's trying to do better around showing you like who's in this book we are seeing like body diversity in a lot of romance covers like for the first time that i can remember um yeah and like anyway not to go too down the path of like covers but i do think it was interesting i was thinking about this about like how we went from like the twilight like dark gothy things to and then we had the hunger games just random symbols and now these classic books to me these books that were actually predated these tried to mimic them and now they're coming back and doing this and i'm like yes stay here stay in your lane and illustrations because they're so good so so good i am so obsessed with all of the covers of right now there's just each one is like a absolute work of art that you I just want to print and put on my wall and like honestly they should start offering prints of some of these because I love them like I love them in that way where like I I want to have that like the beautiful covers that are coming out just I think speak for themselves in terms of like these are really artistic pieces but also like the book itself can now be elevated because of this instead of we had this tradition of just kind of like well it's kind of like trash supermarket romance and it's like I think we're pulling away and be like, it can still be sold here, but we don't have to call it trash. It can be really good. We don't have to have from start to finish it pretending like it's going to be something that's not. Um, and I think too, that's like what bugged me. I'm like, why did you take away the heroine from being the center of attention in these books? Like, that's the whole reason someone would pick it up. That's why I picked it up. Um, anyway. Right? I mean, ever, everyone was going to pick up a book like that because like a girl with a sword. <laughs> And like you're gonna get a long-term reader by building that trust from the start versus if you kind of bait it and you're like oh no like it's, it's all about like whatever zombies and then you get in there and it's like if if, if a kid doesn't want to read about like a girl going through shit they're not gonna read it back to the other thing i want to talk to you about which was book recommendations based off of what you know of the series um and which is not a lot i kind of gave you a very brief description but i also trust your book judgment what i did was i kind of was looking for high fantasy an idea uh, involving with the main character being a girl and um ideally being swords being involved is what i kind of was looking for um and um I actually don't read very much high fantasy, but these are books that I have heard other people yelling about. They sound really cool. So one of them that I've heard about before uh, a few times for the representation of it is Beneath the Citadel. It is a high fantasy that has a fat character, which is like super duper rare in fantasy. And it also has an ace character. So uh, I, that is really drew me to that book because I'm always looking for fat representation. And I've seen a very, very little of it in fantasy. So I was like, that one sounds really cool. I've been meaning to read that one, even though I don't read much high fantasy. Perfect things. And then the only book on this book that this list that I have read is Seafire. Because uh, and this is not so much high fantasy, it's more like, um, a piratey kind of thing, but I feel like people who like girls with swords also probably like girl pirates. And it's queer, and um, I read this a while back, and I really liked it. It's like a, I remember it correctly. It's like pretty much an all female, I think, ship and like adventure and like friendships and 
it is really good. I really liked that one. I haven't read the second one, but that also sounds really good. Sword, Stone, Table, Old Legends, New Voices, which is an anthology, I believe. Yes, and that one's supposed to have, like, really good queer rep. I think that's, like, its thing. It's, like, an anthology of, like, queer representation in fantasy, in high fantasy. And the cover is really cool looking. Yeah, uh, that's, that's on my to-read list because it looks, it looks so, so, so good. And all the authors look amazing. And one that I have not read, but I've heard really good things about, uh, We Hunt the Flame. I have not read it, but I have heard that it is really good. Also, it involves swords, so I was like, I was looking for high fantasy sword stuff. <laughs> this is one that hasn't come out yet, but I'll recommend, because it sounds really good, One for All by Lily Lena. And oh, yes! It's a gender bent Three Musketeers, and the like main character actually has like a chronic illness. So like, like we t- just talked about like things that you do not often get to see, and like that just like there's so many things about this that already fills me with joy. But like th- already this one seems so intentionally and like done and good, um, and has gotten a lot of hype. So I think like definitely, um, if folks want to hype things that are about to come out, that's a good one. Um, I just read A Clash of Steel, which is a Treasure Island remix. Um, I want to read that one. I love C.B. Lee's other series, Not Your Sidekick. I'm a huge fan. If you're looking for uh, queer joy, just like fun superhero story with queerness, that series is great. So I imagine that Clash of Steel must be amazing because I love C.B. Lee. Yeah, Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I cannot recommend enough. Um, So good. That one has a lot to do too with finding magic and finding it within yourself and that journey. There, there are technically swords in, in that book, but I think too in terms of just like that, like finding those connections to magic and what that means to you and your family. Um, those were some things that I felt like really overlapped with um, Savriel, but also I think that like Legendborn is just like so good. Like, please read it, everybody. So good. Every single person. Tamara Pierce's books, of course. The Song of the Lioness. Uh, is one that kind of already deals with like Alana being like already kind of like she's there she's like she's like a badass protector of the small is kind of you follow someone becoming um like getting to that level so it's just like a little bit of like a little different in terms of who it's focused on there's also daughter of the lioness uh, or the tricksters books so you can check those out I also think like relatedly to like badass people with like this kind of undead weird creature magical world of late so black by ll mckinney um oh, i actually think to read that i think that like those like that's a series and i think like those books around like it's kind of like carolian it's a very alice in wonderland but not i think that has a lot to do with it i think that like that's really similar to me and just like it's the journey it's this weird and wonderful world that you're getting um pushed into those were my top of my recommendations i think two books that stand out to me that always get recommended that I'm just kind of like (sighs) about are Lord of the Rings and Mm. Game of Thrones and I get why I totally get that like Eowyn and Arya are really great swords women they're women who like get to own their narrative in some way but they are not the main characters of those books it really annoys me I'm like, I get it. Like, we've got, like, there's a wall in both of them. And, like, there's a thing. Like, evil forces behind them. What you gotta get to. And I don't care. Those are high fantasy stories that do not center women and their growth and their stories. And I'm just like, they're, please, like, let's recommend other books. Because those have, those are in their own lane. I think that you could definitely go from them to these books if you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed those parts of those books, come to, like, Sabriel or any of these other books but I'd say it doesn't really work the other way I didn't find I know that I sought out high fantasy these classic high fantasy books after I read Sabriel because I wanted to chase that and there really wasn't much out there when I had read this book um to chase that exact feeling um which is why I went to Star Wars, which had women with lightsabers, but that's a whole different kind of subgenre. I was like, we got it, we can't yeah. bring in lightsabers. No. I did think of another series that's like not exactly kind of a, but the same, but similar, like very woman led. 
uh, that I have not read, but one of my friends has been bullying me into reading, um, but I've just have not been into been able to read fantasy lately. And that's the um, Kiyoshi books, Avatar Kiyoshi. So if you like Avatar, I've heard amazing things about the Kiyoshi books. It's a duology, they're YA, and it, it's, they're, I, I've heard they're super, super good and that they're queer and yeah, I, I'm currently being bullied right now because I haven't read it yet. So you <laughs> all should read it. So that maybe this I'll get bullied a little less. I love it. I love it. Um, I think this is a pretty good list. I will make sure to include links to all of these in my description and probably in like a separate blog post for like, if you like Sabriel, you should read. Thank you for joining me, you magnificent, wonderful mermaid. You're welcome. It was honored that you asked me. Of course. I miss you. I miss you. So obviously there was more to this video. Not a ton more, but a little more. My mic cut out. I didn't realize it until later. So all of that life altering and life affirming advice and insights are now lost to time. I'm sure it is the greatest two minutes and 15 seconds of film that I've ever made in my entire career. It's gone now. Anyway, if you read this book series, I would love to know. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know how you feel about it. I definitely would like to talk more about this book series any day, any and all the time. Clearly, I love this, this series and I love the work that has gone into it. And I appreciate you for being here. I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons who, I mean, you pretty much sponsor this video. That's who sponsored this video, my patrons. You made this video happen because you support my bookish costume sewy content. This combined all of my loves, book swords and costumes. M amazing, triple threat here. Amazing combo that we're got going on. Anyway, patrons at my Lizzie Bent here above, just special shout out my videos. And please don't, forget to like subscribe and share even though i uh have part of this video missing because it's still nice to uh get my content out there i worked really hard on this one put a lot of heart into it anyway tell me if you read this book series because i i just need to talk about it more with everybody in my life all the time <laughs>